Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. A lot of people these days I see like to throw judgment around like pancakes, but the result isn't as fun or tasty. I see people playing judge, jury, and an executioner being all righteous and correcting other people's transgressions. And really, the point of this talk is to figure out exactly what constitutes a transgression, what constitutes uh, a sin that justifies somebody throwing a stone. So, you know, if we take this to the, the court of law, you know, let's say somebody accidentally murders their partner while asleep, they would probably be punished far less than somebody who deliberately goes out and kills somebody when they're fully conscious and awake and aware. Um, likewise, if somebody's mentally handicapped and they think that somebody's uh, out to kill them, when really they're just in the vegetable aisle trying to find some tomatoes, you know, um, and they think they're trying to throw grenades or something, and they kill the person, likewise, they'll probably suffer a smaller penalty than somebody who's not schizophrenic and wildly batshit fucking nuts. But even then, even further, just because one isn't detectably insane, because really sanity and insanity are relative terms, and I do believe that everyone to different degrees are sane and insane, to different degrees, just some are staggeringly wilder in one area than the other, at least relative to the norm, to everybody else in the majority. So. If you look at this, you know, how, if someone's not detectably sane, you know, you know, one could still say, well, okay, that guy consciously assaulted those people, or that guy consciously raped that woman, or that guy consciously murdered that person, you know, or whatever, whatever the crime be, whatever the most fucked up and evil transgression you can think of, violation of will, violation of goodness, right? most evil thing you can think of. Even then one could say, well, it's probably how the person was raised. They weren't hugged enough. They were molested as a child, you know? They were raised under this false notion of a God with really weird principles that, you know, it's, if God can justify, you know, murdering people for what is righteous, if he can see that as a corrective measure, the murdering of millions, including children, then understandably some hell-bent Christians out there, extremists, can go to extremes with that logic. But one can dig deep and one can look into one's nature, one can look into one's nurturing, into one's genetics and one into one's conditioning. And one can say, well, this person has every right to have these inclinations to, to do these things. Not every right, but it's understandable that he would be inclined to do this more than that person over there with a totally different genetic base, with a totally different uh, lifetime of conditioning and experiences. And this is the point that, you know, it's obviously a lot harder in the judicial process to sift people based on their conditioning and, you know, were they hugged enough and what experiences shaped them to be who they are today, you know? And what genes do they have that give them a, a greater potential to develop these tendencies over those tendencies. You know, it's harder to really evaluate all that stuff and to evaluate a person on that basis, whether they are guilty or less guilty, whether they are sinful or less sinful. And that's the thing, there are always deeper levels beneath the surface of anyone as to why people function the way they do, why they behave the way they do, why they're motivated the way they do. And it's not so simple as looking at the surface and saying, hey, well, hey, that doesn't fit in with the rest of us. That doesn't go according to the book. Because at the end of the day, we weren't born in a book. We weren't born on a page. We weren't born, you know, with this natural conception of law. We were taught all this. We were domesticated as the beast that we would otherwise be if we weren't domesticated. You know, we were raised and we were taught to be civil and language, how to communicate appropriately. We're taught about etiquette, how to compose ourselves, you know, socially. 
you go to any other part in the world, different parts of the world, and you see people behaving in very different ways, different cultures, you know, different laws, different social conditioning. And what might be ludicrous and, and evil or insane in one place might be, or more so is, totally acceptable and maybe even admirable somewhere else or at some different time. I mean, generally these days people frown upon incest, for example, but it's very well known that uh, back in Egyptian days, pharaohs used to marry their sisters as queens, and it was totally acceptable in that culture in that time. And likewise, back in Greece, you know, back in the days of Caesar, it was actually a luxury, luxury to indulge in little boys, sexually. You know, whereas these days you can't help by hearing the word pedophilia and singing it on the paper and all these various red-faced people on the covers, you know, caught out in this evil act. And really, it's relative to the culture and the time. The culture and the time, or the space and time, yeah? It's relative. It's not to say that any of those things, you know, are okay and that they're not fucked up. But I'm just saying that perception of evil and perception of good and right and wrong, even what it means to be righteous, in accordance with what is right and wrong, changes depending on the time and place, depending on the conditioning, depending on the context. It's all context dependent. So when you're evaluating somebody and you're judging somebody, and even if it's not in the court of law, even if you're not determining whether somebody should be sentenced to death, sentenced to jail, sentenced to therapy, uh, sentenced to community service, you know, sentenced to a fine or whatever, when it's not even about sentencing, but you're evaluating how guilty someone is, you know, how evil someone is, how wrong someone is, you know. I think it's important to consider the, the greater context and to realize that you do not have, you cannot possibly conceive the whole context of what's going on. You don't know what that person's been through. You don't know uh, the, ge ge the base of the ge genetics that are operating, uh, allowing that person to function and express itself, uh, you don't know the conditioning that has activated some genes over others and brought them into fuller effect, you know? All you see is like, for example, a guy running on a road and punching another guy in the face and you think, oh, that guy's an asshole and you go and tell everyone about it. See that guy, he just punched that other guy, what a prick. But then you find out that the guy he punched was some other total asshole. I don't know, Tony Abbott. So, oh, that was Tony Abbott. Oh, that's totally fine. He, that guy's a champion. Oh, did you see that guy knock out Tony Abbott? Oh, yeah, what a fucking legend, eh? It, it's relative, you know? It's the reason why that guy's punching whoever that person is. If it's Tony Abbott, you don't even need to ask why. It's obvious. But even if it was someone else, maybe there's a good reason why he did that, you know? And even, even beyond that reason, still, we cannot detect those deeper things that are operating, causing a person to act the way they do. And this is the point. That, yes, we have our own culture here, and this time, and we have our own context, you know, our own parameters, that determine, within these walls, what is normal, what is acceptable under this roof. But the weather changes, and as, as with the weather, everything else changes. People change, laws change, cultures change. Some things become more acceptable over time and other things start becoming less acceptable. For example, murder in some forms has become more acceptable. More people die these days in wars and whatever. As long as you get rewarded with a badge, you get caught a hero on the television because you do it, it's fine. That's when you actually deserve a clap, you know, instead of, instead of some evil stares and shame on you. You actually get rewarded. And that's the point, that I don't think we should be in any rush to judge anybody. I don't think we should be uh, too keen to determine so swiftly if that person is guilty, if that person is wrong, if that person is evil. Because there is so much more work at work and so much more in play that we can understand at the time. And so we're surely not the ones to give the diagnosis of what's going on to determine the truth. How could we? And I think because of this, because of our awareness that, you know, we have to give lenience for our ignorance, for what we're not aware of, and all these invisible factors, because there's much more to the picture operating at any point 
Um, I think we should be a lot softer in our evaluations. I think we should be a lot more open in hearing different interpretations and even interpretations and the perspectives of the people of whom we are judging. I think anybody that judges anyone else, whether it be because of the way they look, because of the way they, you know, worship their God or whatever God they worship, whether it be because of the way they raise their children, or whether they, you know, just have a different lifestyle, you know, or different motives. One's motivated by making money, and one's motivated by protecting trees and chaining himself to loggers' machinery so that they can't chop down the trees and print money, you know? I don't, think, I don't think either side of the fence should really judge too heavily. At the, at the end of the day, it all really comes down to desire, doesn't it? Like I say, everything changes with time in terms of what is appropriate socially and conduct and laws, you know, morals and ethics. They're malleable. But they always shift around desire, don't they? I mean, I've heard it said in the Kabbalah that if it were not for desire, man would never lift one finger. Desire is the fuel which governs everything, it propels everything, all life, all movement, all action. If one was without desire, they would have no reason, no motion, no momentum, no, no pull or push to move, to gain momentum. And I think what we call wrong or evil or somebody transgressing upon our space is when somebody is imposing their will on ours and they're impinging our desires and they're causing something undesirable. You know, some might say, well, some things are just inherently right and good, and, and some things are just inherently evil, such as hurting people. We shouldn't be violent. We shouldn't hurt anybody. But what if you go to a sadomasochistic expedition, and people are hanging by hooks and getting whipped and slapped and electrified, and they enjoy pain, and they're asking for it. They're demanding satisfaction. Is it then wrong? Is it then evil to give them the pain that they want, that they desire? No, of course not. So really it's about our desires and I think it's about what we collectively desire in terms of how we determine our overall laws, in terms of how we determine what is right and wrong is socially acceptable. It's really about coming to a consensus about what we all desire in life, you know, freedom, comfortability, convenience, you know, security, good health. To, to keep alive and running, you know, is good. If anyone steps in the way of that happening and wants to hurt us or damage our freedoms or our security, you know, or, our, you know, hinders our convenience, then that's when penalties are thrown out. That's when judgment is called. That's when it's like, oh, this is preposterous. That's when all this starts happening because people are impinging on our desires. And that's, that's really what it is. So I think that's the other important thing to realize is, is that Desires change. Everyone has a different desire in life. Everyone has different fuel, you know, running their vehicle. And I think, you know, it is important to say, well, okay, given that generally we all do desire freedom and health and these basic, essential, universal things that most, if not everybody, desires, those we can kind of call laws, the laws of our desires in which we wish to protect and keep maintained. And if anybody impinges upon that and compromises those things we want, then we can feel violated, you know, and we can react as thus. But I think outside those essential things, if somebody's just looking weird or doing something a bit differently than you, and it's not really compromising your security or health in any vital way. Basically, I've been talking too long. I think if that's what's happening, you should just shut your mouth. If you have an issue with it, maybe the problem is, and the issue is with you, and your judgment, and you comparing what desires you with what obviously is compelling them in life and their desires. And based on your measuring stick of what's worthy in life and what's unworthy, you're judging them on how they're playing their game. Ultimately, we're all players in the same game. We're playing it for different reasons, and we're playing it different ways. As long as we respect what is essential, all these other things are just superficial aesthetics. Petty, really, to kick that much of a stink over. I think it, it's, it, I think it's, it gobsmacks me. I think it's highly ironic that people will stamp their feet about gay marriage and people getting tattoos, you know, and not wearing enough clothing when they go out in public. And all these different things, all these differences in culture and lifestyle and appearances, 
but then they'll let people frack the fuck out of our earth and they'll let these wars continue and the bloodshed and pr police brutality and our freedoms being squeezed out inch by inch, mile after mile by our legislative governments and the corporatocracy they'll let advertising run wild using sex irrespective of age these days and you know, violence in movies, yeah I like a bit of violence but when it verges on propaganda, I mean, how popular are cop shows and war shows these days? You know? Like, it's okay that we come and violate you and just enter your homes and scare the fuck out of your grandmas and traumatize your children and chase cars because they've stolen fuel from a tank. So we have this big, huge police chase thing, which is great for entertainment, for media, and make for a good episode. And we chase them down the highway, going the wrong way. And 200 Ks an hour until they crash into some other unsuspecting innocent civilian. Woo! But it's good for television, right? Nobody has an issue with this and goes, well, this is preposterous. We should all collectively write in, write a petition to have the show Cops cancelled because they shouldn't exploit uh, other people and also be motivated to act obscenely and use their power a lot more than they otherwise would use their power just because they think it will make a good episode and it will be their time to shine on television, so that Ma can see them. You know, all sorts of fucked up shit goes down. Shit what happens in the churches at night. You know what I'm saying? They're all against sodomy during the day, you know, when everyone's looking, but when no one's looking, watch out. That's what I think's rich, is that people let the big things slip by and they turn their back into head in the sand and remain ignorant, keep distracted, focusing on their own lives and their own little petty issues. White man's problems, you know? And then, you know, it's like, well, they've got to complain about something. So they, they focus on the, the smaller stuff that doesn't really matter so much. There's no point complaining about the big stuff because, you know, they, they probably benefit in some way from all the fucked up shit we're doing to the earth. It probably benefits most people. So they just turn a blind eye to that. But the way that person looks over there or the way that person's raising their kid, that, that's not benefiting me at all. I can just give them a shit. Even though it doesn't really avail anything. It doesn't do anything doesn't work towards progress. Yeah! There's a lot of crybabies around! You know? I think we should all stop crying, stop bitching and moaning, and stop being assholes to each other. We should start focusing on what really matters most, despite the superficial differences. We should recognize what essentially unites us, and we should arc up more and let our voices be heard against things which encroach upon what universally unites us and our universal essential desires anything which encroaches upon our desire for health and good fortune even on a spiritual level you know protection security and i'm not talking about what other people sell as protection and security anything that encroaches upon what we collectively desire like our freedom slipping away that's what we should be focusing on Otherwise, you're doing nothing but distracting yourself and other people. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'm going to tend to bigger things. I'm going to go home and distract the fuck out of myself with the PlayStation. Because, you know, that's what I like to do. Can't judge me.